Former U.S. President Donald Trump was formally nominated as the Republican presidential candidate on Monday, and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as the vice presidential nominee. A high-ranking North Korean diplomat based in Cuba is confirmed to have defected to South Korea last year, the latest breakaway to be witnessed by the regime's elite group members. Korea's auto export hit an all-time high in the first half of the year as demand in North America expanded and sales of hybrid cars went up. It's July 16th, 6 p.m. in Seoul. This is News Center. Thank you for joining us. I'm Yoon Jung-min. Over in the U.S., former President Trump was officially nominated as the Republican presidential candidate two days after he survived an assassination attempt at a rally. He picked Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, a critic-turned-supporter, as his running mate. Our Shin Ha-yong begins our coverage. Former President Donald Trump made his first public appearance at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee on Monday, two days after the rally shooting. With a bandage over his right ear injured during the assassination attempt on Saturday, he entered the convention arena with a raised face greeting cheering supporters. 2,400 delegates from across the United States gathered on Monday to officially nominate Trump as the party's presidential candidate during a roll call vote. The great state of Nevada proudly casts all of its 26 votes for President Donald J. Trump. Trump officially became the 2024 Republican presidential nominee after surpassing the delegate majority threshold following a speech by his son, Eric Trump. Hereby declaring him the Republican nominee for President of the United States of America. After an acceptance speech on the final day of the convention on Thursday, Trump would then be in place for a possible rerun of the 2020 election against Joe Biden on November 5th, although the incumbent president is facing increasing pressure from within his party not to run. Trump also announced his running mate on Monday, selecting a hardline conservative Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his vice presidential pick. The 39-year-old, who once said he was an anti-Trump Republican, has since become a supporter. Vance gained prominence with the release of his memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, which reflects on his upbringing and growing up in a low-income family involved in violence and addiction in Middletown, Ohio, known as a part of America's Rust Belt. Trump's decision is seen as a strategic move as there is an anticipation that Vance's Rust Belt background will resonate with voters in critical swing states such as Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. On Monday, it was also reported that Trump's criminal case over the mishandling of classified documents had been dismissed. A Trump-appointed U.S. District Judge in Florida ruled that the appointment of Special Counsel Jack Smith, who filed the indictment against Trump, was unlawful. However, Smith's team indicated that they would appeal the decision. Shin Ayong, Arirang News. Wall Street closed at fresh highs on Monday following the failed assassination attempt against a former U.S. president. Lee Sung Jae explains. It was feared that the weekend assassination attempt on U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump would bring uncertainty to the U.S. financial market. However. Wall Street responded with a record high close for the Dow Jones and S&P 500 indexes. The Dow Jones closed up 210.82 points, or 0.53 percent, from the previous trading session to end Monday's trading session at a fresh record high of 40,211.72. The S&P 500, which has seen all-time highs being shattered regularly throughout the year, saw yet another record high finishing the day at 5,631.22, up 15.87 points, or 0.28 percent from the previous trading session. Monday's trading also saw a number of stocks linked to Trump or his policies jump. Trump Media, the parent company of social networking service Truth Social, soared 31.4 percent, while Tesla, whose CEO Elon Musk has openly expressed his support for Trump, also closed up 1.8 percent. Energy-related stocks like ExxonMobil and Chevron and the health insurance stocks like United Health rose due to expectations of deregulation following a possible Trump re-election.
The market expectation is that if Trump does win the November U.S. presidential election, he will strengthen trade barriers, expand tax cuts, and ease regulations related to cryptocurrency and climate change responses. Meanwhile, Wall Street also responded positively to the increasing prospects of a September rate cut. U.S. Fed Chair Jerome Powell at an event at the Economic Club of Washington on Monday said that U.S. inflation data over the second quarter of this year added somewhat to confidence that the economy is on pace to reach the central bank's target inflation of 2 percent. While Powell did not directly mention a September rate cut, his comments suggest such a decision may not be far off. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. In other news, a high-ranking North Korean diplomat based in Cuba is confirmed to have defected to South Korea last year. The news comes as the latest in a series of defections by members of the North Korean elite in recent years. Our Kim jong shil has the details. A senior North Korean diplomat based in Cuba defected to the South last November. On Tuesday, the National Intelligence Service said the media reports on the defection of a North Korean counselor of political affairs in Cuba were factual. The NIS gave no further details. A South Korean newspaper, the Joseon Ilbo, reported early Tuesday that 52-year-old Lee Il-gyu fled to the south with his wife and children. Lee, a leading expert on relations with Cuba, reportedly left around the time South Korea was actively communicating with Cuba ahead of establishing diplomatic ties in February. He told the paper any North Korean resident would think of wanting to live in South Korea at least once, adding that he felt irritation with the North Korean regime, pessimism about the future, and desire to escape these as his motivation for fleeing. Lee's defection made headlines as he is one of the highest-ranking North Korean diplomats made public to have defected in recent years. The acting ambassadors to Italy and Kuwait defected in 2019, while the defection by Taeyong the former deputy ambassador to the UK in 2016, remains that of the highest-ranked diplomat to come to the South. Pundits say the continued defections of senior North Korean diplomats indicate that members of the elite in the North are becoming increasingly disillusioned with the Kim Jong-un regime. Their situation of being stationed abroad could also make it easier for them to defect. Kim Jong-sil, Arirang News. The North Korean leader's sister, Kim Yo-jong, threatened South Korea would face devastating consequences if it sends more anti-regime leaflets into the North. In a statement on Tuesday, Kim said Pyongyang had found 29 large balloons carrying leaflets near the inter-Korean border and other areas. Kim said North Korea would have to inevitably change the manner of its response if more of such, quote, dirty acts continued. The statement comes just two days after its rare release of a photo showing anti-Pyongyang leaflets being set on fire. Previously, Pyongyang has sent trash-filled balloons in response to anti-North Korea leaflets sent by North Korean defectors. The commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command spoke to the South Korean media for the first time on the sidelines of the Rim of the Pacific exercise held in Hawaii, covering a range of key security issues. Our defense correspondent, Chim min jong brings us the highlights. In his first interview with the South Korean media since taking office in May, Commander Samuel Paparo of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command has emphasized the importance of denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. The developments in North Korea are very, very concerning uh, to, to everybody, and we seek the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula at all times. Uh, we're equal partners with South Korea. And uh, in the spirit of, the, of Washington, we've established a nuclear consultative group. Uh, through the nuclear consultative group, we're in a constant dialogue at very high levels of secrecy uh, to find our, a strategic way ahead uh, to, uh, um, to deal with the issue. Speaking with Arirang News and six other domestic media outlets in Hawaii last Thursday on the sidelines of the Rim of the Pacific Maritime Exercise, Paparo also responded to questions about the growing calls within South Korea to possess nuclear weapons, including nuclear-powered submarines. From the standpoint of, of submarine warfare, uh, you know, I, I think uh, 
I think uh, you know it's important as allies and partners to find the most efficient and the most effective way as allies and partners to combine our capabilities in ways that most effectively defend our alliances and partnerships. If the operational analysis leads us to believe that, then, uh, you know, then we can move forward at a later date. Though the commander did not offer further comments, it was the first time for a top U.S. military commander to directly address Tower's pursuit of nuclear submarines. Paparo also affirmed that the U.S. forces in South Korea will not be relocated in the event of a potential Chinese invasion of Taiwan. Concerns about a possible relocation have been growing, with China reportedly seeking to build a military capable of doing so by 2027. Well, we'd have no plans to relocate uh, any of the capability on the Korean Peninsula uh, just because of the solidness of our alliance. And any combat plans that we'd have would be global plans to deal with all threats. The commander also praised South Korea's leadership role in the Indo-Pacific. So you ask about Korea's leadership role in the Indo in the Indo-Pacific, and I mean I think the ambitions of, of Korea's leadership says it all: global, pivotal state. I'll also mention too uh, the trilateral with uh, with Republic of Korea, Japan, and the United States, and so. Uh, and, and so uh, Republic of Korea is just uh, expressing a tremendous leadership role uh, throughout the Indo-Pacific and, in fact, uh, through the globe. The commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command is responsible for U.S. forces deployed on approximately half of the Earth's surface. Che Min-dong, Arirang News. President Yoon song Nir says South Korea's alliance with the U.S. is now, quote, truly nuclear-based. Remarks to this end were shared on Tuesday during his cabinet meeting following his attendance at the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. last week. There, he and his U.S. counterpart, Joe Biden, signed a joint statement ushering in guidelines on nuclear deterrence on the Korean Peninsula. President Yoon also touched upon his separate bilateral engagements with 13 world leaders on the sidelines of the security summit and called on his cabinet for follow-up measures. South Korea saw an all-time high for auto experts in the first half of 2024. That was mainly attributed to a robust performance, especially in North America, along with greater sales of hybrid cars globally. Park Geun tells us more. South Korea's automobile exports reached a record high in the first half of this year. Data from the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy on Tuesday showed that the value of automobile exports from January to June was over 37 billion U.S. dollars. That's an on-year increase of 3.8 percent. The ministry said expanding demand and sales of hybrid cars and increased exports to North America were behind South Korea's performance. Specifically, exports to North America jumped 26 percent compared to a year before, reaching nearly 22 billion dollars. That's in contrast to a decrease in exports to all the other regions during the first half of 2024. The ministry said the drop in outbound shipments to the European market was mainly due to subsidy suspensions for electric cars and unsold inventory from last year. In June alone, export value was around $6.2 billion, similar to last year, despite fewer working days. That continued a run of monthly auto export value above $6 billion in seven of the last eight months, with February being an exception due to the Lunar New Year holiday. By region, outbound shipments to North America surpassed $3.6 billion. Exports to the Middle East also saw an increase for the first time in eight months in June. Production dropped slightly by 2 percent on year due to a base effect. The industry ministry said better performance is expected for the second half of the year on increased productivity and a return to full-scale production at a Kia factory in Gwangmyeong in July after a refit. The ministry added it will be supporting companies so that the country can reach its export goal of $100 billion for cars and auto parts for this year. Park Geun-hoo, Arirang News. 
Turning to the medical dispute, the majority of trainee doctors in the country have yet to return to their work sites, past the deadline for acceptance of their resignation letters delivered earlier, leaving hospitals struggling to process these en masse. Moon hye explains. A day after the deadline for hospitals to begin processing their resignations passed, trainee doctors are remaining resolute in their decision not to return to work to protest the government's medical reform. Data from the government and medical organization showed on Tuesday that out of 13,756 trainee doctors nationwide, only between 40 to 50 interns and residents had returned to work by Monday. Only 7 out of 520 trainee doctors at the country's big five hospitals, including Seoul National University and Severance Hospitals, had reported for duty, with Korea University's Annam Hospital stating that only one trainee doctor had returned to work. The government previously said that resignation forms would start to be automatically processed if the doctors did not state their intention to return, prompting concerns that mass resignations would be inevitable. Many hospitals are currently waiting for responses and are putting processing on hold for the time being. The olive branch extended by the government in an attempt to end the prolonged walkout has been met with a lukewarm response from trainee doctors so far. Speaking at a plenary session, the country's health minister admitted that there could be more resigning than those returning to work and spoke of planning more concrete policies to persuade them to resume their training in September. Last week, the government withdrew punitive measures against trainee doctors defying return-to-work orders and promised special benefits to those who reapply to training hospitals later this year. Meanwhile, a briefing from the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters stressed that medical reform cannot be delayed and the doctors should give it a chance instead of taking collective action even before its implementation. Hospitals are also due to submit the number of trainee doctor slots available for recruits in the second half of the year to the Ministry of Health and Welfare by Wednesday. Moon Hedeon, Arirang News. In other news, an unprecedented heat dome is suffocating many states in the U.S., leading to concerning civilian casualties. Ian Jin has more. At least 38 people are suspected to have died in six states this summer from heat-related illnesses caused by new record-breaking temperatures. That heat wave is now spreading to the East Coast with more than 140 million Americans in 33 states under some extent of heat alert for Tuesday. Meteorologists warn that temperatures will climb above the historical average, extending heat alerts from Maine to Florida with health departments preparing for heat-related emergencies. Major cities along the East Coast, including Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, were put under an excessive heat warning. And in Philadelphia, the heat index, which is what the temperature feels like with humidity, has been forecast to reach 40 degrees Celsius. New York City and Boston are under a heat advisory through Tuesday. In southeast Texas, hundreds of thousands of residents have been left without power after being hit by Hurricane Barrel earlier in the week and are now left to get through the scorching heat. As of Monday afternoon, over 280,000 still had no power. Las Vegas set a new all-time heat record of 120 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly 49 degrees Celsius, on July 7th. Then set a new record of seven straight days of temperatures at or above 46 degrees Celsius. Such temperatures have turned the Las Vegas Valley into a giant oven, forcing officials to close public pools and museums in order to keep people indoors for most of the day. Weather conditions have become intolerable even for those used to extreme desert climate. Meteorologists say the heat will be concentrated on the East Coast on Tuesday and could last into Wednesday. But a cold front will bring an end to the record heat in the East by Wednesday night. Yun Jin, Arirang News. Over in London, K-pop boy band Stray Kids lit up one of the UK's largest music festivals this past Sunday. The eight-member group made its debut as headliners on the last day of this year's British Summertime Hyde Park Festival, a first for a K-pop boy band. Stray Kids performed about 20 songs over some two hours in front of a reported audience of some 50,000. The group's headlining performance follows Blackpink's debut last year at the same festival, which marked a first in K-pop history. Korea may not be among the world's leading potato producers, but it is seeking a lead in exporting quality seed potatoes, even to their countries of origin. Chai Yun-kyung explains. 
This place filled with glass houses is the Highland Agriculture Research Institute, the number one research center for potatoes in Korea. It is a prerequisite to ensure disease-free seed potatoes since the tuber exhibits clonal propagation, which can pass viruses onto the next generation. In this place, 160,000 disease-free seed potatoes are produced using hydroponics with additional nutrients such as calcium and magnesium. Potatoes arrived in South Korea in 1824 during the reign of King Sunjo of the Joseon dynasty, becoming a major food source during times of austerity. In 1961, Official research into potato cultivation began with a specialized research institute being opened in Taegwalyeong. The research center successfully developed new technology to produce and replicate disease-free seed potatoes through hydroponics in the early 1990s for the first time in the world. Dr. Woo Jang Chun set up the research center here in Taegwalyeong, where the cool climate is ideal for growing potatoes in summer. The center has promoted 47 species of potatoes so far, establishing South Korea as an advanced country that exports disease-free seed potatoes to 20 countries in Africa, Asia and even South America, where potatoes were first cultivated. The United Nations Potato Research Center is also trying to introduce Korea's technology for producing seed potatoes. The Rural Development Administration held an international symposium highlighting the history and achievements in research and development of potato cultivation through international cooperation, marking the 200th anniversary of the introduction of potatoes to Korea. Now, Korean seed potatoes are in the global spotlight as they have also become a source for cosmetics and medical supplies production beyond food resources. Cha yung -kyung. Arirang News. From tonight, heavy rain will be concentrated in the Seoul metropolitan area. Up to 60 millimeters per hour will fall in Seoul and 70 in northern areas of Gyeonggi-do province. A preliminary heavy rain warning has been issued in these areas. This heavy rain will continue until Thursday with up to 250 millimeters pouring over northern parts of Gyeonggi-do province. Other parts of the capital area and western parts of Gangwon-do province are expected to receive up to 150 millimeters of monsoon rain. Tomorrow, Seoul, Daejeon and Busan will start off at 24 degrees Celsius. It will move up to 26 in Seoul and Chuncheon, Gwangju and Daegu, 31 degrees. The monsoon rain will continue throughout this week. That's all for Korea. Here are the weather conditions around the world. And that is News Center for tonight. Thank you for watching. A panel session up next.